this short video, we're going to walk you through the steps to configure a display in Venus 1500 version 4. There are several different ways to configure a display in Venus 1500. If you've just installed the software and no other displays have been configured yet, you'll likely get a message saying that fact and asking you if you'd like to launch the display wizard in order to configure a display. Uh, if you would, just click yes and this will launch the configuration wizard. Now I'm going to go ahead and hit cancel to cancel out of this and show you the other way to get into the display configuration wizard. You can get there by clicking the application button or the orange V in the top left, go to configure, and then displays. This will bring up the display management window and what you want to do is simply click add display. And you can see that it begins the process of what's called auto discovery. Uh, if all of the network connections uh, have been made to the display, such as the radios being installed uh, and, and everything is set up properly, uh, the display should discover. However, there are some cases where uh, network settings and, and, and items such as that may prevent the display from discovering. So we've got several different ways that you can configure that we'll see come up here. If auto discovery fails to pick up the display that's attached to the computer, uh, simply click the button labeled my display is not in the list and you're given two other options I want to automatically detect or I want to manually create and I'll show you both so first I want to say I want to automatically detect a display and I need to tell it whether I'm making a serial type connection uh, to the display or if I'm connected to say a network and using Ethernet uh, in this case I'll, I'll click on Ethernet and I'm going to want to enter the IP address or the DHCP name of the display. Now we've got a display emulator here that I'm going to enter the, uh, the DHCP name for. I'm going to hit click continue. And now it's going to go out and it's going to scan for that specific address. So rather than just trying to discover what is out there, it's going to a specific location that I told it to go to. And that's what auto detection is. And we can see that it did pick it up. Uh, this display has a password on it, so I'm going to go ahead and enter the password for that display and click continue. Not all displays have a password. And it's uh, asking me detected display name. So this is the name as how it's going to appear in my software. Uh, so say for example, I had multiple displays on site. I need some way of distinguishing one display from the next. So for example, I may list one display as the north parking lot and the other display as the south parking lot or whatever fits your installation site. So for this one I'll just name it according uh, to what I call this emulator here at work. Click on continue. It's going to ask me what time zone is this display in. Uh, it's all based off of Greenwich Mean Time. Uh, so central time zone is minus six and that's where we are so I'm going to leave that. We do observe daylight savings time. If your particular location does not observe daylight savings time just uncheck that box. And now it asks me if I would like to auto detect another display uh, with that same name. Uh, and obviously with uh, network equipment uh, only one device can have a specific name or IP address so I'm going to click no. And it just gives me a summary of what I'm configuring and then I just click finish as long as everything looks good. And then uh, I'm automatically prompted if I want to download the media kit for it. I'm going to click no for this exercise. We do have another training video out there that shows you other ways to get to the media kit as well. Now let's go through the example of manually creating a display and you would likely use this if you've installed the software on the computer prior to your display being installed um, but you want to go ahead and begin creating content and learning the software um, so in this case there would be no display to actually connect to uh, but the process is very similar you're going to start by clicking add display and if you know the display is not there just go ahead and click the cancel button this saves you a little bit of time and click on my display is not in the list and then this time we're going to want to click I want to manually create a display now you're going to need to know some information about uh, your particular display in order to get it configured correctly in the software. Uh, if you get it configured incorrectly or for the wrong type of display, any content that you create may not be usable when your uh, display arrives. 
Uh, so the first piece of information that you need to know is the product family, whether it's a Galaxy, a Galaxy Pro, uh, or DVX display. So for this example, I'll select Galaxy. You need to know the height and the width of your display, and this is the pixel height and pixel width, not the physical dimensions. So I'll just I'll pick a pretty common display size here of 48 pixels high by 160 wide. And then it's asking the color depth. And you'll see several different options here. If I know that I've got a Galaxy 3500 series uh, that only has one color of LED, say red LEDs, it would be considered a monochrome display. But I can still show shades of that one color. Um, so I, I would choose monochrome 4096. Or if it's a full color display, um, I would choose RGB 68 billion colors. Um, again, different displays have different um, color depths based on the technology of the display. If you're unsure, uh, you can always give us a call and we can help you out with that. For this example, I'll go ahead and choose RGB 68 billion and then click continue. And then again, it's asking me how I wish to connect to our or to your display uh, via serial or Ethernet. Most of our displays uh, now are communicating over Ethernet, so that's going to be the most common option. And it's going to ask you the IP address or DHCP name of the display. Uh, all of our displays ship out with a standard default IP address, um, so I'm going to just go ahead and enter in that address there and click continue. And then again, like before, it's going to ask us for a display name. Uh, and this can be anything that you uh, designate, so such as North Parking Lot uh, or South Parking Lot. It could, you could even leave it as Display 1. Uh, display address, uh, you can just leave that set to 1 and click Continue. It's going to ask you the time zone. Uh, obviously, choose the, the correct time zone for, for where you're located at. Again, GMT minus 6 is the central time zone. And daylight savings time. Click continue. Would you like to create another display of the same type? Uh, if you have multiple displays that are the same size and same technology, uh, you could click yes here to go ahead and create that second display. Uh, but if you only have one display, then just click no. Again, you get the summary of what you're creating. Uh, as long as all of that's correct, then you click finish. Again, you're prompted to download the media kit. I'll go ahead and click no. I do encourage you to go out and get the media kit for your display though. And now we can see that I've got that display configured in my software. Uh, and once it gets installed, um, I should be able to talk to it, I, depending on the IP addressing uh, and, and everything, you may need to adjust that. If you need to edit uh, a configuration, uh, you can do that just by selecting the display and clicking on edit. And again, it just steps you through the same screens over again, allowing you to edit it. Um, so if you needed to change the IP address of, uh, of the display in the software, then you could do that here. For additional training information, visit www.dactronics.com slash Venus1500 to see a list of additional training options and video tutorials.